July. We are so excited. I hope that you saw some of the pictures and the videos that they've taken from House of David's uh, annual 4th of July celebration. It's always just so powerful. Every year we just do more and more fireworks and the fellowship gets richer and better and, and the numbers grow. This year we're so blessed to have uh, Pastor Jeremiah and Amanda Moss with Be Blessed Barbecue. They set up their truck there and they were feeding us and it was absolutely fantastic. So anyway, we had a great time. So anyway, I want to welcome you and give everybody a minute to get uh, online. And uh, I'm going to talk about dreams, visions, and interpretation part two. This will be part two. And and uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you about uh, uh, Pastor uh, Dana Coverstone. Pastor uh, Dana Coverstone actually called me today. We had a wonderful conversation. This is a precious man of God. He's a pastor. As he says, he goes, I'm a pastor and a teacher. And uh, he has a small church in just over the line in Tennessee into Kentucky, an Assembly of God church. And uh, he's, uh, he's just a very powerful, precious man. And I'm just so excited that I had an opportunity to be able to uh, share with him today. And I'm going to share with you, of course, at another level, about the dreams that he had. He's had two dreams and we're going to process those and uh, we're going to learn from them, but we're also going to learn how to uh, very powerfully, uh, I'm going to teach you how to use that gift when, when that gift, when a prophetic dream or a prophetic warning comes, we're going to learn how to process that apostolically and as prophets, how do we take it and then what does God want us to do with it? So um, we're going to do that. So anyway, if you want somebody that needs to understand that's battling fear right now, then go ahead and hit that share button or go ahead and send them a text, send them a note and say, you know, Kurt Landry is going to be sharing on dreams, vision and interpretation. The key is, is that you need to know how to handle any and all communication that comes from the Lord. So, so we're going to have that. So anyway, I'm going to, Christy's joining me here. So go ahead and come on in Hello. and she's here. <coughs> we're getting ready for the fourth. It's actually celebrated here where we live on Monkey Island. It's tomorrow night. So tomorrow night will be a uh, big night. We have fireworks that just go off over here on the end of the island and we're blessed to be able to watch them from our house so that we <laughs> we don't have to go out to the crowds. It's wonderful. I don't know if any of you saw this on Facebook or not, but this is this is incredible. Christy was going through some old pictures, but this is where we started with House of David. So this was about a 5,600 square foot house. And you see that white part, that's where we added on the bathrooms that you see now. And of course, it's 26,000 square feet now and 55 acres. And it's just, it's, it's really humbling and awesome to see what the Lord has done. And for all of you who are partners, and thank you so much for, for all that you do. I'm going to have Christy, if, uh, let me, uh, you, I'll get it. if you grab a chair. I just, yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to have you read for me tonight. Okay. Welcome to live TV. Welcome to our house. <laughs> okay, I just have my readers. So. You got your readers? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. we're ready to go. All right. Father God, we just pray for this meeting tonight. Yes. And, and Lord, we pray for uh, Pastor Dana. Coverstone and his family, and his precious wife and his two daughters and the rest of the family and his congregation. And we pray that what I share tonight will give them peace and set them free. In Yeshua's name. Amen. So I've never met Pastor Dana, except for today on the phone. I talked to him for quite a long time. But I can tell you that as soon as I saw the dream... The dream didn't scare me because the Lord showed me, I, I'm tracking for years like what's happening next prophetically. I don't share it all, but 
I am a prophet and that's how I process. I process in about 10 year windows. So when I saw this dream, I thought, well, this is what Satan wants to do, but he, he won't be able to do it. And plus we're gonna put restraining orders on him and stop the whole thing in the courts. But my heart went out for this, this pastor. I, I don't know him, but I thought, oh my gosh. Mm. You know, he's putting this out there on Facebook. You know, social media is relatively a new thing. So you're putting it out there. And I'm sure he never thought he was going to have over 800,000 views. I don't know where it's at today. But that was yesterday. So that's viral. And of course, he has been attacked by, you know, everybody under the sun. And so my heart goes out because I've been a prophet for 30 years. And, uh, and the Lord always had me say, yes, I am a prophet of the Lord, which that even makes it, you know, I mean, that sounds so wacky, you know. It's easy to say, I'm a rabbi, I'm a pastor, I'm an evangelist. But, but the Lord always had me say that I was a, a prophet, but he's always backed me up. And, um, and one of the things that Pastor Dana says, he says, I'm not a prophet. And he says, I'm a teacher and a pastor, and, but... You have to understand, this dream was so alarming. He said he woke up and he said his heart was just beating out of his chest <laughs> and he was sweating and uh, it was so alarming, he felt like he needed to share it. So he was sharing it in love for you to warn you about what happened. Now, he doesn't come out of a, a culture. Uh, he's in a very small town, 1,500 people. He has 100 people or so in his congregation. And like he said to me, he says, I don't, I don't know any prophets that I could share this. And, uh, and, and in the culture and the denomination that he's from, it's, you know, the apostolic fivefold prophetic is, is, is not readily available. Uh, so anyway, uh, I reached out, as you know, last Tuesday night, I said, if anybody knows, knows him, have him call me. And sure enough, he did. And, uh, and I'm praying for him and uh, I want you to pray for him. And for those of you that are in the body of Christ that are prophets, I ask that you don't judge him and I ask that you don't attack him and I ask you don't send stuff to him and, and just, listen, he's done his job and, and I had great ministry time with him discussing the protocol and the balance of all this and I've made myself available to spiritually to cover him on this and to help him through it and, and like I shared with him next time, I said, if the Lord gives you a dream like this, call me and We'll unpack it and talk about it like I did with Pastor Tim when I saw the dream and, and we arrived to what we thought it meant and then what we were gonna do with it. And so he he accepted that and uh, so we're gonna do that because he's a very teachable, humble servant of the Lord and he's a good man. He is a good man. And uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that tonight and then at the end, we're gonna take communion but we're also gonna go into the courts of heaven and actually walk through kind of a preliminary, basically shut this thing down so that the fear isn't attacking you. Because so many of my partners and even my own family were terrified of this dream. It's, a, it's an awful dream, it's terrifying. So we're gonna break that assignment of fear in the courts so that we can move on and you understand that it's canceled and it's not gonna happen, okay? So that's good. So that's where we're gonna go tonight. Um, <clears throat> So one of the first things I, I shared with the pastor, as I, I said, there's, there's when, even though you're saying you're not a prophet, but you're bringing something out, people make a lot of assumptions. And that's what happened with this. They assumed, oh, this is a prophetic dream. Meaning like it's going to happen. But in 1 Corinthians 14 and 32, it says, and the spirits, plural of the prophets, are subject to the prophets. And so I said to him, I said, what I would have suggest for the next time, if you get a prophetic dream, you need to call a prophet or have meeting with prophets, plural, like what Pastor Tim and I did. We're both prophets and we operate in gifts of dreams, interpretation, and vision. And we have for 30 years. So we have a track record. And so when, with, with Tim and I, it's like we do this all, it's pretty regular. It comes in, we, we, we put two or three together and, uh, and, and we'll get a game plan to not only what is God saying, but how, what do, what's the solution? What does he want us to do with it? That's the key is, is it's a call, there's dreams, prophetic dreams are a call to action. So, um, and he agreed with that. And, um, 
But like he said, in his situation, he didn't know any prophets. Well, now we're connecting him to some prophets and that will be a good thing for him. Um, but here's the key is a prophetic vision or a dream, if, if it's gonna be effective, there's gotta be a place of agreement. It's the prayer of agreement. If we're not in agreement with what it's saying and we're all over the place, then Satan's already won. Because um, uh, one of the first things I try to discern, and I can't, I can't train this for you, okay? But, but there's different types of dreams, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna go through them just real quick. There's ordinary dreams, and ordinary dreams are, in Ecclesiastes 5, 7, it says, for there's a multitude of dreams and many words, and there is also vanity, but the fear of the Lord. So most of those dreams, I'm gonna go deeper tonight, if that's okay, got a little bit more time. Most of those ordinary dreams come out of a sleep stage in the second heaven. It doesn't come out of the courts of heaven in the third heaven. It's coming out of the second heaven, and that's why there's vanity, because most of them are filtered through fear, pride, lust, different things like that. So, so, so that's where those dreams, those dreams are filtered through that second heaven where Satan has reign. Okay, and then there's prophetic dreams. Now, prophetic dreams, they all, true prophetic dreams, all come out of the third heaven, okay? And so uh, with Pastor Dana, I'm not sure for me, this is just me, okay, I'm sharing my opinion. I think the first dream he had about in March was a third heaven dream, but I think the second one that came was more of a blend between second and third heaven dreams because there was so much fear and anxiety involved in it. So that's just me. It doesn't matter where it came from for me. It's just, we're gonna cancel it, whether it's on earth, second heaven, third heaven, it doesn't make any difference. We're gonna ask the Lord what to do with it. And the Lord's already instructed me what to do with it. And we're gonna do that tonight, okay? And then there's a warning dream. So the thing that's interesting about both of the pastor's dreams is the first and second dream had warnings. And the warnings were the preparation. And part of the, part of the reason that he's, he's struggling is because I spoke a warning, I know this over a year ago, that there needed to be prophetic of seasoned prophets needed to have uh, prophetic councils where people like Pastor Dana Coverstone could actually come and submit things to and there would actually be a five-fold filter and then be able to say, okay, we've, we've uh, examined this, we have two or three witnesses and this is what it's saying, here's what we do with it, and this is when we do it, which is very, very important. And um, I haven't been able to put together those councils, but uh, that's, not, that's not the pastor's fault that that's, that's not together, but biblically we should have those councils. But uh, so anyway, when a warning dream comes, we need to know what to do with it, and of course we're gonna do it tonight. Um, and then the third type of dream is, is uh, impartation or spiritual gifts, where the Lord will activate something that's been asleep in you and he'll awaken it in a dream. And another third, the second, fourth dream is a sign of his presence. Like, so like a dream of his presence, like what Jacob had at uh, Jacob's ladder at Bethel. So where he had an experience and he experienced the presence of God that changed his life, experienced the presence of God. Uh, I'm gonna repeat before I start into uh, the ministry tonight, there are seven things that a modern day New Testament prophet does, okay? And that's what we're going to do tonight. The first thing is confirm the vision that you have, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm saying I am confirming that the vision from Pastor Dana Coverstone, first dream and second dream, whether they're second or third heaven dreams, both of them are warning dreams. They are prophetic warning. They're not decreeing what shall be, they're a warning of what Satan is thinking about. It's, it's demonic strategies being revealed to us so that we know how to pray, okay? So, and the third is cor correct and fine tune the vision. And so uh, that's what I, I, I said to the young pastor. I said, if he would have called me first, then we would have corrected and fine tuned it before he put it out on social media. Now, that we can't back into it now that it, it's where it is, it's, it's, it's gone viral, so I, I can't go out and catch it and bring it back. It's like bringing a cloud back. But ideally, what would have happened, and he agreed with this, 
We should have fine-tuned it because just because you have a prophetic warning dream doesn't mean, let's say there's 10 points in the, the prophetic warning dream. The Lord may want to crawl, walk, run on the warning and just do like two or three and then wait a couple of weeks and then do th three and four and then do five and six. You know, it's, it's, but that comes with experience because what happens is the goal is to get people into what I teach, act. They have to apply the warning make changes for the warning, and then have a spiritual transformation from the Holy Spirit and the God's love to be able to remove the sin, to shut the door of where this warning would come into your family and business and your church. Okay, so those are the three things. Um, the fourth is warning or protection of the vision. So, so this is a warning or a protection of the vision of the United States relationship, particularly in this hour, these two dreams I know that he's not mentioning Israel, but I'm telling you, this is a warning to me as a, as a prophet out of Zion. This is a warning to me that, that we have to up our prayer in regards to especially what's going on with the Judea and Samaria annexation and, and uh, what's happening around with the neighbors around Israel right now. We need to be, we need to be upping the warning there, okay? Um, and there needs to be expansion of the vision. I, I think for me, uh, with, with these warning dreams, is that I think we can fairly say is that the church really isn't ready for the magnitude spiritually of the warfare that uh, Pastor uh, Coverstone had in his dream. I would, say none, I would say House of David's not ready, and I'd say your church isn't ready either. So there needs to be an expansion and a warning of what attacks are coming. Um, absolutely. These, these are just warning of what attacks are coming and we need to cancel, but we also need preparation. I am not against preparation. So, and, and I know there was some strong uh, preparation, First Amendment type preparations. I, I, have, I, have no, I don't struggle with any of that protecting your family, providing for your family, having resources in case things go bad. I mean, we live in Tornado Alley. The, part, the weather is here is crazy. Uh, uh, but we also are very much of a First Amendment uh, protection type people here in Oklahoma, and I think it should be everywhere in the world. I, I think you have a God-given biblical right to protect your family. So, so I'm good with all that, but the key is, is that you can't all of a sudden say, okay, I'm gonna take my eyes off God and off God in prayer and my decrees, and I'm going to put my my food that I store, my firearms, and all of those types of things. You can't trust in the things of the world over trusting in the authority of God. So that's, that's where that balance has to come. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't be prepared. I can tell you, if you've ever been to House of David, you know we're very prepared. So because of the message we carry, uh, you don't get into House of David without going through certain steps that have to take place. And we've been doing that a long time. And everyone said, well, churches are learning all sorts of security. Well, we've had security for 10 years. So, so I understand the protecting of your flock. And that's why I'm doing this message. And um, seventh of authority of a New Testament prophet is pronouncing judgment against these attacks and dismantling and canceling them. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Okay. So these are in my notes. You can get it. Go to CLM. Go to, I mean, go to KurtLandry.com and you can get these off my notes. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> am I doing okay? Or? You're doing great. Okay. <clears throat> can I talk about a few things that make... I want to be very, just very transparent and I don't, I'm not being disrespectful to anyone, please. But there's certain things I had to think about that being, so to say, in the prophetic business for 30 years, there's, there's certain things that hinder, like when I speak a prophetic word, where, uh, where, where people will attack me. So I, this, is possible, uh, for, this is for Pastor Dana, but all of you. You have to understand there's a common thread that I've seen over the last 30 years, and, uh, and that is warnings of this huge uh, judgment that's coming. And, uh, 
and the and the problem is is like Y two K, you know that type of stuff. This huge judgment that's coming, and um, and then it never happens. So so it's kind of like this COVID thing, you know. COVID is oh my gosh, wear a mask, shelter, gloves. You know, six feet apart. No, don't wear a mask. Shelter. Well, you can go. You don't have to shelter. It's all over the place. And so what's happened with people, it's like, you know, they throw their hands up and say, you know what? You haven't kept the instructions clear enough for me. And I just have to go back to normal life. And I'm going to go on and, you know what? And just do what I have to do. That's that's what I'm seeing with people. Because it, it's it's like the sky is falling too many times. But the same thing happens in the prophetic. In the prophetic, it's like this huge judgment thing. And then, you know, nothing happens. But being a publisher and an author, I can tell you that uh, if you put the fear factor in your books and in your messages, oh yeah, they sell. Fear and sex are the two most powerful things. And of course, in the church, we can't use the sex, but we definitely know how to use the fear. And, and so you th some of the best-selling books in, in, uh, in Christian authors are books on judgment and people want to buy them. So we have a propensity or a tendency to want to gravitate toward fearful things. And we seem to have a hunger to go to that tree of knowledge and, and, and find it. So you need to understand that the doomsday prophets, that when they're speaking out about this, it's usually because, and I'm just saying this, I'm not saying this about Pastor Dana, I don't know his eschatology, I don't know it, but I do know that my, my experience over 30 years is that most fear judgment type preaching is usually highly sin conscious and the eschatology is rapture, okay? So that's just my observation, my opinion, you don't have to agree with it. But usually when I go to the source of wherever something's coming for, especially when it's fear-based, I go, okay, what do these people believe and where do they come from? So I see that in the upper 90%, that's where this stuff comes from. And uh, so there's not a righteousness consciousness, and I'm not talking about hyper grace. I'm talking about like what I believe is my righteousness is in Christ Jesus, and it's Christ in me that's my hope and glory. And and listen, I, I believe in holiness, and we preach it, but we don't magnify the sin, and, and we don't magnify the sinner. We magnify the Lord, and we battle in the opposite spirit through his love and his blood. But listen, in our ministry, we don't tolerate you know, sin. We don't sweep it under the carpet. Um, if you know any of the history of this ministry, that's not how we operate. So there has to be a balance. And uh, so, so I think that, that, you know, this first part of the dream that he had about in March, for me, this is what I think happened with, with the COVID. I would like to think of it is, and now if any of you that, that followed me during Passover, you know that I was advertising last year that Passover 5780 was going to be a reset to redeem the time. You remember that? That was the title. I had given that to my marketing team and they started that in um, 2019 advertising come to House of David, which we couldn't do, and you came to our house. <laughs> it's not David's house, but you came to Kurt and Christie's house. And But the title was Reset and Redeem. Reset and Redeem. Go ahead and go into the comments and say, it's time to reset and redeem. Go ahead, put in the comments. It's time to reset and redeem. So, so that was it. And so my looking back at this whole COVID situation uh, shut down, I said it early on, this is a forced sabbatical. And it's interesting, it's not only a forced sabbatical, but if you do some research, the oceans are coming to rest, the ozone layer is healing, smog is decreasing, and people's families' priorities are increasing. So there's been a lot of good things. I'm not saying God sent COVID-19, I'm not, awesome. uh, but like there's been a lot of good stuff that happened with it. Okay, I know in our life it's happened, and look how much more attractive we are. <laughs> no, I'm teasing, but I tell you what, 45 years not being in the airplane, I, I may not look more attractive to you, but I definitely don't put in the comments you don't look more attractive. You know, go ahead, put in the comments say you're, you know what, you you're much more attractive since you haven't flown for two months in the airplane. 
And that's it. Because the reason I was looking ragged and not as attractive, it's Delta Airlines' fault. Let's face it, Delta. Delta did it to us. Don't say that, Delta. Okay, well, it was American then. Well, we fly you all. Doesn't make any difference who it is. But um, so anyway, it was a forced sabbatical. And the Lord's brought beauty out of ashes. And he's brought some good things. So now it's time for us to reset and redeem the time. Well, I'm telling all this for a reason. Satan doesn't like that you're more attractive. He liked you tired and ugly mm. on the plane and short-tempered and whatever else that you had. But now he's given you this beauty rest in the spirit where he marinated you in Passover and he gave you 49 days of counting down of the Omer to massage you and to restore you. And he gave you a wonderful fire at the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot. And now you're ready for action and boom, what happens? The riots and boom, what happens? Here's this dream and all these things are coming to do what? It tells you one thing. Satan doesn't like what's happening to your position, body of Christ. Yeah. Ooh, he didn't. He liked it better when you were That's tired dangerous. and not so cute. Now you're cute, powerful, and ready to go. And now he's going to say, guess what? I'm rolling up my sleeves and I'm coming in and I'm going to beat the tar out of you. And it's like, guess what? It's not going to happen. We didn't get this attractive and this cute to be able to waste it, having you beat us up in the alley, so to say. This is a time where we beat up on Satan, and he is going to get it too. So anyway, God is good. So uh, that's the pattern is what's coming. And I can tell you, I've prophesied in Israel, and, and the Israel's best is yet to come. And in the United States, the best is yet to come. But there is judgment that is happening. These were... These were warning dreams, and there's judgment in them. So I'll get into that, okay? So let's, first of all, let's kind of walk into, I'm going to have Christy read some things, but let's walk into what what is the atmosphere biblically when there's judgment? You know, it, it, and, I, and I speak on judgment, and um, and I know that, uh, I know Pastor Dane is watching, so hello to you and your family. This is my wife, Christy. Hello. And, and I always, I have a saying, judgment is the friend of those who desire right standing with God. But basically, all scripture is judgment. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. That is judgment on cancer. Cancer has to go. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. The yes. blood of Jesus, Jesus is judgment. Yes. The word is judgment. The Holy Spirit is judgment. Anytime they invade, the bad guys have to go. So anyway, uh, but when judgment comes, it's like, oh my gosh, then how do we behave? So I want to say this to you that the United States of America is in judgment. Okay? we This is judgment, what's happening. And the thing is, is like, how do you individually respond to judgment? How do I respond? How does my businesses that we have and how do our church and, and our ministries. How do we respond to judgment? That's what we're going to talk about here. And so I'm going to have Christy start with a very famous scripture in Jeremiah. Okay, Jeremiah 29, 4 and 7. You know, this is the prophet Jeremiah, and he's telling him, guess what? You guys are going into captivity. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and bear daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. Wow. So in the midst of your captivity, this is the Jews, now they're in Babylon, they're in captivity. He's telling them build houses, marry, have children, prosper. And in addition to that, even though it's not your country, not your town, Pray for the shalom or the peace, nothing broken. Pray for the destiny that God has on your calling and in your family's legacy and inheritance. Yes. Keep sowing into it, even though you're not in the place where you should be. 
So I'll translate that to the Kurt, not the Hebrew. It means quit wasting time waiting on everything to be perfect before you're happy and prospering and activating your yes, call. Amen. Okay? Stop, amen. stop waiting, stop wasting, you know, because these a lot of these things aren't coming to pass. And, and the thing that, that I get nervous about as a prophet is one of the principles is honor is the currency of heaven. But when you honor fear, that's why the scripture says, and what they feared came upon them. See, that's why, that's why we have to be careful, even with warning dreams on how they're delivered, because what happens is they create a situation, people start speaking it out, and that fuels it and actually can cause it to happen. So we cancel that in Yeshua's yes, name. Yeshua's and that's why people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need prophetic discernment to be able to, when you have prophetic warnings, to bring it to multiple prophets. And then they say, okay, how are we going to deal with it? So we're going to deal with this together. Now, um, so uh, very famous scripture, you know, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, but I'm going to have her read down to 15. This is Jeremiah 29, 11 through 15. Okay. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all of the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive because you have said, the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. Do I finish or go on? No. No, I'm let's stop there. Turn. Okay. Okay, so in the midst of captivity, the Lord raise, raises up prophets, okay? Because the Lord does nothing without speaking it through his servant, the prophet. So even in captivity, there's prophets that speak. So judgment, okay? The majority of people, I'm, please, I'm being so transparent. I'm, I'm going to do a, a very much more politically correct interview uh, with uh, Charisma on Monday in regards to this. But right now, I'm talking to you as my family and my partners, okay? Uh, dealing as a prophet for 30 years with speaking out judgment over things, you can't shotgun it, and it can't be over the obvious, because people will always say, oh, uh, America's in judgment because of abortion, and America is in judgment because of how it's treating Israel or whatever. Yes, Absolutely. But it's deeper than that. What's the source of them? What what uh, uh, bail structure is it that's causing them to want to kill the babies? Okay, what's behind it? And then what is the anti-Semitic spirit that wants them to try to destroy Israel? So you have to go to that. So I want to say this to you, and and I'm and and we're not going to deal with it. Obviously, uh, we would deal with this on a on a much more private level. But I, I do, I do want to say this. God is judging right now. He is judging America, and He is judging the first root that He is that He is taking the axe to right now is Freemasonry. Okay, across the board, it's Freemasonry. Go ahead, do the research on most of these statues that are being cut down and destroyed. These are Freemasons. Okay, so there's a Freemasonry thing that's going on, whether anyone knows it or not. And listen, I'm an ex 32nd degree Freemason that's been delivered, and I lead Freemason deliverance, and it's Freemasonry. That is the root of it, but the but the second root of it is the globalist agenda, and they're all Freemasons. So you have a globalist one world agenda. And that's being judged. Look at all of it being exposed. Look, look at all the globalist stuff that, that is just, it's coming out. If, if you really look at like, like, like these things are crashing down. And I, I don't want to go into it and get you off on trails like that. But the globalists are totally being judged by God and they're being exposed. Uh, the, the, the second thing that you're seeing, and it pretty much started at the last Super Bowl, and it's the Illuminati. The Illuminati stuff is like, you know, listen, this is a secret organization, and they don't like to be high profile, 
but isn't it amazing? And they're also connected to Freemasonry, see? So that's the first root. And isn't it interesting now that all this Illuminati stuff and these different people who are involved in the Illuminati all of a sudden are like, hey, their skirts are getting lifted. And, and all this stuff is being exposed. So who's doing all this exposing? It's certainly not the FBI, but you do have an administration and you have a, an attorney general that are now starting to look into these things. But I'm telling you, it's judgment from the Lord because the Lord loves America. He loves the American people. He loves the American dream. He's the one that gave us the dream. And he's called America to stand with Israel in this hour. And he's going to clean it up. But these are the things that that he's, he's uh, cleaning out. And of course, everybody knows, which would be the third layer, which is the deep state swamp. And that's what you're seeing right now. So it's like all, all the swampites are being found out. And, and I can tell you between now and November, you're gonna be surprised that who comes out with the swamp on them. And, and it's all being exposed. And, and it's not bar, praise God. I pray for all my leaders and, and, they're, and they're bringing this out into the light. But you need to know that, that this is the Lord. And yes, abortion brings judgment. And yes, cursing Israel. I know I will bless those that bless Israel. I will curse those that curse. But it's deeper than that. So the problem is, is that when we always focus the, ju the judgment on sin consciousness and bring it into the church and all that the church is doing wrong is here's the key. The church has the blood of Jesus. The church can repent. And the ch God so loved the church that he gave his only begotten son. God didn't give anything to the Freemasons, globalist, Illuminati, and the deep swamp. They don't have anything. So when judgment comes from them, they're naked and exposed. We, praise God, we have the blood of Jesus and we have the scripture, if my people who are called by my name, praise God, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I'll hear their land. That's our assignment in this hour. But I can tell you that the Freemasons don't have that prayer because I, I was in there and I know all their secret chants and everything. They do not have Second Chronicles 7.14. So, so the key is, is that, that the fear of the DNA in people's bloodlines to that, people who have Freemasonry in their bloodline, you may not have been a Freemason. Maybe your dad wasn't a Freemason, but your grandfather was. And, and the sins are vis visited to the fourth generation. So when you go into survival uh, mode and you have strategies for self-protection and all that, and it, and it supersedes your faith and your, and your uh, relationship with the Lord, it's because those filters and that DNA is bringing fear, not fear of the Lord, but a spirit of fear into your visions, into your dreams, and into your family line. And you need to get those cut off so that you can process things properly because that's what Jeremiah was saying. He says, listen, you guys are going to Babylon, but I want you to build houses, multiply, prosper, and actually pray blessings over your captivity and the peace that I've carried you away captive in. So, you know, here's the key is we are called to be salt and light. We are called to preserve our cities, our regions, our state, and our nation. We are not called to hide. We are not called to come in agreement with fear. We are people of faith. We are people that speak out faith. We are the people who confess faith. We, our houses, are houses of prayer for all nations. So I'm going to have Christy go to 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 19 through 21. I think I have a little tab on there. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians yeah, 5, 19 through 21. Now, if, if you're in the comments right now, say, say, Rabbi, I'm agreeing with you. Say, I'm agreeing. And uh, go ahead and put an agreement because we're going to pray and we're going to take communion, but we need to be in agreement. Okay, so just go ahead and hit that in the comments. Say, I'm in agreement. Okay. That is that God was reconciled, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Okay, let's stop right there. So we have the power right now as the body of Christ, you and I coming in agreement 
to call on the blood of Jesus for the reconciliation of our sins. And I'm sorry to tell you this, that the Illuminati and the swamp doesn't have that. We are the ones. So we want judgment to come because when judgment comes, it's the Lord rebuke you, Satan. You see what I'm saying? This The Lord is rebuking in this season of time and he is preparing America for a great awakening. Okay, and so praise God. And everyone thinks everything's falling apart. Well, everything was falling apart before you just didn't see it. It's kind of like you were really sick before and all of a sudden you got a bad diagnosis and the symptoms are coming. Well, that's what's happened. To, um, this didn't happen in the last 60 days. America has been sick for a long time. And so now it just God saying, listen, I'm preparing America for a great awakening, the largest harvest of souls. I'm preparing for the revival of the nation of Israel, literally in the Jewish people coming back to Messiah. This is a powerful time. There's going to be a revival amongst the Arabs and the Arab nations in the Middle East. There's going to be a revival in China. China is going to be hit with the Holy Spirit and fire. And, and, and there's going to be in Asia and Southeast Asia and, and down under in Australia, New Zealand and the islands afar off and say, you're going to have Ireland and, and Europe. Everyone think, oh, Europe's asleep. No, there's going to be a fire of the Holy Ghost hit these places and it's going to be God. God's doing this. God is not done with this world. Amen. You know, I, I wouldn't even want to go out on the rapture right now. I'm so excited for the souls. Listen, I've sowed 45 trips into Israel. I am waiting to go to Jerusalem and see all the rabbis sitting down there praying in tongues and Hava Nagila. And, and I mean, I've waited on this a long time and it's coming Amen. to a Jerusalem near you. And I guarantee you, Christy and I will be there. Yes, and I, I we're, we're just so pumped. So so anyway, uh, go ahead and finish that scripture. I'm sorry, I went down a rabbit trail here. Um, so you read 19? 19. Okay. Okay, let's go to down to 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he has made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, the Lord Jesus. Isn't that powerful? That is powerful. And 18 says, the, the beginning of 18 says, now all, things, now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So that's why we're ambassadors, to be able to proclaim the good news of the gospel, the truth, the love, the hope, the faith of God in and through us. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's good. The problem is quite simple in America. When man's laws are in conflict with God's laws, there's chaos. Yeah. And God is, guess what? He is right. He is, so to say, he is balancing the scales. And uh, it's an exciting time to be alive. But now we're going to shift gears and we're going to bring some redemption in, into your life. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to start out in prayer. And, and one of the things I want you to, um, you can go to kurtlandry.com, okay? And whoever's monitoring from my staff tonight, I want you to go to, um, I, I oh, put it. Oh, I guess it's here. I'm sorry. The Psalm 91? Yes, uh -huh. It's right here. Sorry. Okay. I All right. I just was writing so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I want, this is a free download. Okay. See this? Uh-uh. Many of you have it, but go ahead and re-download it in case you misplace it like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I misplaced it for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we're going to demonstrate how to use this, and we're actually going to not just demonstrate, but we're going to, to use it. Okay? But i got to do a little, little work first. Okay? So I'm just going to take you into my prayer life. Okay? We're gonna, you're gonna just join me in, in prayer, okay? Father God, I come to you now in the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. Lord, I bless my brother, Pastor Dana 
Coverstone in yes, Kentucky. Lord. I bless him. Yes. Lord, I know he didn't follow all the right protocols. He doesn't even understand them. But Lord, his heart was to save his friends. Yes. His heart, as he told me, was to save his church, his friends, and he had no idea that this was going to blow up. And Lord, he is not a man of fear. He sends one of his daughters to, to college in Minnesota. One of his daughters uh, in Arizona. He is not a man of fear. He's a man of faith. And so, Lord, we just we ask you to remove all the fear that came through these dreams yes. and all the doubt. Yeah, I know it wasn't his intention. It's not our intention. But, Lord, we ask that, that the assignment of the enemy that has hijacked these dreams to bring a spirit of fear, Lord, we ask that that spirit be canceled now in Yeshua's name. And Lord, we honor the courage of Pastor Dana to be able to share his dream with us. And Lord, we choose to forgive all those who have attacked him. He's been attacked on social media. And Lord, and many of them are saints. But Lord, we choose to forgive all the saints who have been critical, angry, and mean. We choose, before we go into the courts of heaven, before we even go in... Um, into the courts, Lord, we ask, Lord, for forgiveness for our brothers and sisters that don't understand and that come from different cultures and different belief systems. But Lord, we do receive the warning that Satan hates this nation and hates what it stands for and hates the believers in this nation. And this anti-Semitic, Jezebelic, Leviathan spirit that is attacking America and Lord, I, I decree right now, it will not manipulate or twist the words that I'm saying in Yeshua's name. Yeshua's name. But Lord, I just thank you that in Yeshua's name that, that Lord, we can come to you and we can prepare to pray. And Lord, we just cleanse ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And we decree that you are our father and you art in heaven, in yes. the courts of heaven. And we say, hallowed and holy be thy name. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we decree and declare over this dream, Lord, yes. and over all the different words that are spoken that thy will be done. Yes. Thy kingdom come on earth and in the United States of America as it is written in our books in heaven. Yes, Lord. That what the books in heaven say about America will yes. happen yes. over the next four or five months. Yes, Lord. And that, Lord, we cancel uh, the plan of Satan to try to... Uh, to bring anarchy and destruction yes. to our nation. Yes, this is our nation. Yes, Lord. And Lord, before we go into the, the court of mercy, Lord, we put on and we prepare our feet with the gospel of truth. Lord, we gird our loins with the full armor of God. Lord, we gird our loins, Lord, uh, about with that truth. Lord, we put on the breastplate of righteousness yes. and the helmet of our yes. salvation. And yes. we decree, let this mind be in you that's in yes. Christ Jesus. Yes. Lord, we take our shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, yes. which is the word of God. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we are not battling against flesh and blood. Thank you, Lord. But heavenly hosts and spirits in dark places. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that we're going to be set free from all fear and all doubt. Yes. And but Lord, as American citizens, and for those who intercede in the other countries that watch this program from all over the world, I ask that you all agree with us for our nation, that this assignment of death and destruction of our nation be canceled tonight in Yeshua's name. Yes, and we decree that the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that, Lord, according to your word, that when judgment comes, according to your word in Malachi, that you say, and I will come near you for judgment. And Lord, you are judging America right now and the nations. And you, Lord, your, Lord's, your word says you'll be a swift witness. And Lord, I ask that you be a swift witness in this judgment. Yes. I ask you be a swift witness before the election in November. 
And your word says that you will judge and you will come against the sorcerers. So Father God, let your judgment deal with all the witchcraft, all the Freemasonry, all the Illuminati, all the globalists, all those in the swamp, all the child trafficking, all the abortionists, all the stuff that is causing this judgment to come, Lord. Yes. We ask that you judge the sorcerers according to your word. Yes. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you come against the adulterers and that, Lord, you come against all the sexual perversion that is, that is in our government and, and that, is, that is allowing the things that are taking place, violating the covenant of family. Lord, we ask that you expose it and that you rebuke it and you correct it from the Supreme Court on down through our country. Yes, and Father God, your word says you, you will judge the perjurers. And Lord, Father God, I pray that you would judge those who perjure themselves, who have lied under oath and, and have lied under investigation and special, special investigations. And Lord, I ask that every lying tongue that has spoken out and that it that is lying and is covering up with every single uh, attack against this nation, against our laws, against our constitution, and against our ways. Father God, I thank you that the judgment of God is falling upon that and exposing the lies and the liars in Yeshua's name according to your word. Yes, Lord. And Lord, those who come against and exploit wage earners and widows and orphans and father god and those that are doing that lord that you're judging those in this nation and you're judging those that are doing it in other nations that with the child labor and all those things and the child sex trafficking and lord i thank you that you're judging it now and those who turn away aliens lord father god and you say because they do not fear me says the lord of hosts for I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O Jacob. And Father God, I thank you that your judgment is falling upon these. And I thank you, Lord, that it's the Lord's judgment, the Lord's word, and the Lord's hand that will expose Satan's plan that was in this horrible dream. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to rebuke, destroy, dismantle and disallow this horrible dream to take place in America at the end of this year. And Lord, I thank you for it. Yes. I thank you for Michael, the archangel, the heavenly host of Zion yes, and Gabriel. Lord. And, and Lord, I remind you, I put you into remembrance of your word, O yes, Lord, Lord, that the United States of America and this nation and our president has recognized Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel and the Jewish people and moved the embassy two years ago from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And Lord, I call on that blessing yes. of Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those that bless you. you. Lord, your word says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May they have peace within their palaces. May we say for our brethren's sake, shalom, shalom to Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord, for that blessing that's yes. coming from America. Thank you, Lord, for the recognizing of the Golan Heights and the sovereignty of the high mountain in northern Israel that this administration and President Trump has recognized. And I thank you, Lord, that, that you're shifting it now. You're shifting it now. You're shifting it now. You. You're shifting it now. And Father God, we come out of the court of mercy and we move into your war room. We move into your war room. And Lord, the reason we're moving into the war room now is because in mercy, this is the Lord rebuking. We're not doing the warfare for this. We're putting God into remembrance of his word. Yeah. It is so Battle big. It's not Lord's. something we can do. Mm -hmm. This is something the Lord's doing. Mm -hmm. And we, we do it in the mercy court, the court of chesed, of, of grace and mercy. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're handling it. And I thank you, Lord, that you're protecting all of us and, and Pastor Coverstone and his family. Yes. But now, Lord, we go into the war room. And I, and I ask each one of you to take your mantle. And, and you need to put your spiritual mantles on right now. And we're going to pray for you and your family, your churches, your businesses, your cities that you've been carried away captive in your states. And we're going to pray. And you can download this on KurtLandry.com. But this is a prayer the Lord gave us that we personalized it. And it's Psalm 23 and Psalm 91 together. And we're going to pray it now. Father God, in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Because I have made the Lord 
who is my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Go ahead in the comments and say, amen. He will keep me in all his ways. You need, it's important that you do this. You need to have, you need to confess. You, you need to put that in the comments. Psalm 91, 12 through 13. And in his hands, and in his hands, they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, and I shall trample them under feet. Thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and say no weapon. No weapon. Amen. Say Amen. No, weapon. no weapon. Amen. Psalm 23, 5. Lord, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thank you anoint my head with oil and my cup run its Thank over. You. So I want you to get your Kiddush cup ready. I want you to get your communion cup ready. Get your juice ready. Saying, Father God, go ahead Father and type God. in there. Say, Lord, I am in covenant with you. I Lord, I am invited to your table. Lord, I am invited to your And I receive the invitation now. And I receive the invitation now. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's Psalm name. Psalm 91, 14 and 16. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore, I that he says he will deliver me. Say, Lord, you will deliver Lord, me. Lord, you will deliver me. Go ahead, me. put in the comments. Say, Lord, you will deliver me. You will deliver me, Lord. He will set me on high. Say, Lord, I take a high place. Yes. Just move in the spirit right now. You're going to take that high place. We're in the war room right now. We're going to go up the mountain of the Lord. We're going to go to a higher place in the spirit right now. Say, Lord, your ways are not my ways. They are higher, but I'm going to the high place. Say, Lord, I'm going to the high place. Go ahead and type in there. Say, I'm going to the high place right now. Because I know his name. Say, Lord, you are the I am. Lord, you are the I am. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. And your name is on me. And your name is and on me. And in me. And in me. I didn't choose you. I didn't choose you. You chose me. You chose me. I didn't love you. I didn't love you. You loved me first. You loved me first. You didn't, I didn't save you. I didn't save you. You saved me. You saved me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For your name. Thank you for your name. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. Say, Lord, Lord I am calling upon you now. I am calling upon you now. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. On behalf of my family. On behalf of my family. Behalf of my church. Behalf of my church. And my friends and community. And my friends and community. And thank you, Lord, that you will answer me. And thank you, Lord, that you will answer me. And Lord, in times of trouble, you will answer me. And Lord, in times of trouble, you will answer me. You will deliver me. You will deliver me. <coughs> you will honor me. You will honor me. With long life. With long life. And he will satisfy me. And you will satisfy me. And show me his salvation. And show us your salvation. And Lord, I thank you. And Lord, we thank you. That the next four months. That the next four months. Are going to be the most prosperous. Are going to be the most prosperous. Joyful. Joyful. Stretching. Stretching. Testing. Testing. But empowering. But empowering. Four months of my life. Four months of our lives. Lord, we decree and declare. Lord, we decree and declare. And we raise our right covenant hand. And we raise our right covenant hand. A Psalm 23 and 6. Psalm 23 and 6. Surely. Surely. Goodness. Goodness. And mercy, and mercy shall follow me. Shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I will dwell and in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 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 In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we seal this in the courts in the yes, war room. Lord. Yes. And Lord, now we leave that that battle room and we go to the book of records Thank you. we go to the book of records and, and you need to make this decree into the book of records say father god father god let my name be found in your book let my name be found in your book 
Under faith. Under faith. I am free from all fear. I am free from all fear. Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. You. You. Are the author and finisher. Are the author and finisher. Of my faith. Of my faith. And I will give you praise. And I will give you praise. And Lord, I thank you. And Lord, I thank you. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. That no weapon. That no weapon. Formed against me. Formed against me. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. And every tongue, and every tongue that rises against me, that rises against me, it, I have the right. I have the right as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God, of the Most High God, to condemn those tongues, to condemn those tongues. Every tongue, every tongue, every demon, every demon, and Satan himself, and Satan himself that has spoken against me, that has spoken against me, my family, my family. My calling, my calling, my finances, my finances, my health, my health, my relationships, my relationships, my marriage, my marriage. It is canceled now. It is canceled now by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Because His word. Because Your word is spirit and life. Is spirit and life. And the word. And the word became flesh. Became flesh. And dwelt amongst and us. And dwelt amongst us. And His word. And Your word is sharper. Is sharper than any two-edged sword. Any two-edged sword. Cutting soul ties. Cutting soul ties. Cutting every assignment of Freemasonry. Cutting every assignment. Every assignment from the sorcerers. Every assignment from the Purgers. sorcerers. Purgers. Purgers. Adulterers. Adulterers. Everything speaking against us. Everything speaking against us. Is now cut us. off us. Is now cut off of All us. All sins in our family bloodline. All sins in our family are bloodline. Are expunged. Are expunged. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our righteousness. Our righteousness. Is in Christ. Jesus is in Christ Jesus our Yeshua our Yeshua our Messiah our Messiah thank you Lord thank you Lord we seal this we seal this in the book in the book thank you it's in our book thank you it's in our book in Yeshua's name in Yeshua's we name. love you Lord we love and you, we Lord. are thankful and we are thankful and Lord we we seal this now yes, Lord. thank you Lord. we seal this I think you have a I want them to download. Do we have a communion? I want them to get a free download on the communion card. Is it under there? Uh, I don't think so. While she's finding that, I will tell you this. You might want to consider tonight partnering with us at clmmin.com forward slash partner. And if you wish to donate, you can go to clmmin.com forward slash donate and uh, you can donate so a seed into this powerful ministry tonight that is taking place and is shifting our nation and shifting your life as well okay you don't have it okay all right okay i thought i had it here hang on one second i'll be right back okay we're going to seal this tonight. I know it went a little long, and uh, I'm not apologizing because, boy, we got it done. Yes, thank you. We Father. got it done. Thank I want to again Lord. thank Pastor Dana Coverstone for calling me today. Yes. I'm looking forward to having a relationship with this young man. He's yes. a good man. And, uh, Lord, give him good dreams and good yes, warnings. Lord. And, Lord, uh, praise God that this assault against our nation is canceled. Yes. And we do it with the third cup of the Passover, the redemptive cup, when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So I'm going to have Christy go ahead and say the, the blessing, and she's going to bless the uh, the bread. I'll tell you what, I'll do the bread, you do the wine. How about okay. that? Go okay. Go. go ahead and we'll, we'll lift up the bread. We've got some matzah here from our Passover, and uh, I'll speak the blessing. And if you get your crackers and your matzah ready... Baruch atah Adonai Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Leka Min Haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This is always the interesting part when you have a camera <laughs> and your mouth is dry because you've been preaching. That's why I have the Saba cup. 
Oklahoma tea. Yeah. <laughs> so my daughter got this. Don't you like this? Saba, this is uh, basically grandpa for Hebrew. And my dad had a commercial fishing company in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, Florida. So we have this to remember Grandpa Joe. Let's go on with that. Hallelujah. We're going to have Christy bless the wine, the juice. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Bori Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Yeshua. So Thank I'm going to have Christy pray and seal this blessing for us tonight. Thank you. Remember to order your prayer. And uh, thank you for supporting the ministry with your prayer and your giving. If you want to be a partner, it would be great. And uh, we just seal this work now. Father, we, just, we give you praise and thanksgiving, Lord, that you are always faithful to us. And you continue, Lord, to give us a path to be able to stay on the narrow path so that we can live in a broad place, Father. We thank you, Father, for the bread of life and the, the, the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ that was so horribly mutilated on that cross, Lord, so that we could have healing in our flesh and healing in our lives, Lord. Yes, Lord. Free we from We thank fear. you, Father, for that. And we thank you, Lord, for the, for the wine, Lord, which is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who heals and who restores. And Lord, through that blood, we have been cleansed and we have been made whole. And Lord, we were not, we were not worthy and not deserving. And yet your love was so great that you chose us and you determined that we were going to be worthy of your love. And because of that love, Lord, now we have eternal life with you. For that, we give you praise, Lord. We thank you that you are the keeper of our souls and that our spirits will forever be with you and that you love us and you love and take care of our families, Lord, and that you have sent angels round and about us, Father, to keep us in all of our ways of obedience and service, Lord. So we just give you praise this night. We thank you, Father, that with Pastor Dana and the thing that he spoke in his dream, Lord, that, that there is a way, Father, of hope in the midst of the situation, Lord. We thank you that he was bold enough to go ahead and call Rabbi so that we could talk to him and that we could help him and his family, Father, through these times because we know that there are there are negative things and negative phone calls that were being made. So we just we, we are honored that he would take communion with us this night, Lord. We just give you praise, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your grace and your power, your power to keep your children protected in all of our ways of obedience and service. In Yeshua's name we pray. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. I know it's early. Shabbat Shalom. Have a great fourth and yes. be safe. Yes, we thank and, you for the uh, fourth. Yeah, we're, we're excited about the fourth and mm -hmm. uh, hit just perfect timing so we can have the weekend off. So get some rest, enjoy your family, and remember to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. 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 A lot of activity going on over there right now. And uh, we bless you and we thank you. We hope this is, ministry has helped you. If it has helped you and it's set you free from all that fear, why don't you hit the share button, send it to mm -hmm. a friend. Let it multiply and let it go out. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye.